Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Saga and I'm currently in my final year of a Master's Aerospace Engineering degree. So in this video today, what I want to share with you is sort of the workload and methods you can use to manage your time while studying engineering at university. So let's get into this video. If you do want to see more content like this and you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so and also give this video a like if you enjoy and learn something new. So firstly, what I want to say is that university work is generally split into split, split, split into two different categories. So you have your contact hours and then you also have your independent study. So when I mean contact hours, these are hours where you have lectures, tutorials and lab work. Basically any time where you have direct contact or communication with your lecturer or any other academic staff. And your independent study time is basically all the other time left over outside of these contact hours where you tend to spend your time revising, working on assignments and also doing other quizzes and stuff like that. So that's sort of how your workload and time is broken down into, into those two categories at university. So in each year, the number of contact hours you have varies and this is what I want to go into in this video and also I'll share as to how you can best organise your time depending on the sort of number of contact hours you do have. So let's go into the first two years of university. So in the first two years of university, I had an average of about 24 contact hours a week. So this is pretty much like the, the maximum that most university students have. I think engineers definitely have like some of the highest number of contact hours compared to other courses like in the arts and humanities area. So this is kind of expected, but it's definitely not on the super high side of contact hours in engineering. It's sort of the average amount. The reason for this basically is that you do such a wide variety of topics within your first and second year. So you're bound to have a lot of classes and this means, well, a lot of lectures and tutorials, which all adds up to this large number of contact hours. So the best advice I have for if you're in first and second year is to just stick to the timetable that the university has given you because that's what I did. And I felt as though that I did good enough in those first and two years such that I got an average of a first overall. So sticking to that timetable really helps you keep that structure and flow of each week, what you need to do and so on. You will definitely have some free time in that schedule, so make sure you make the most of it by either allocating time to do revision, work on assignments, or maybe other tutorial sheets, or even work on quizzes and other stuff that you've been given by your course, because I think it's important to capitalize on these breaks in time, especially when you have such a heavy, full schedule um, set by the uni because you know you need to obviously have that time outside of your lessons and tutorials to really understand what you've learned and I think making the most of these little blocks of time that are available to you throughout the day is a really useful thing to do. With such a busy schedule it's really easy to sort of overwork yourself so it's as important to allocate time for you to do exercise and socialize with friends and just meet new people whilst at uni because you are in your first and second year so it's always good to try and make new friends and you know hang out with people you haven't done so before. So that's my overview and sort of tips of how you can manage your time and what the workload is like in your first two years at university. So third year, what's the workload like in third year? Well third year some people if you're doing the bachelors of engineering route you will graduate this year and if you're not then well, you'll just have another year and then you'll graduate in your fourth year. So if you are graduating in your third year, skip ahead to the fourth year section because that will be more applicable because you'll have your dissertation and stuff like that to work on. But anyway, if you're doing a master's year, then, or ma not master's year, if you're doing a master's course, then listen up because your third year is sort of like a midway point between your final year and the first and second year because the number of courses you do decreases um, and especially the contact hours, they decrease as well. So in my third year, I had about 11 contact hours every week. This meant that I had a lot more time to work on assignments, quizzes, and revise 
However, it is important that you start to become more proactive at creating a structure for what you need to do each day because there's going to be some days where you actually don't have anything planned by the university so you have to basically create a nice structure for the day where you can follow through and get those revision tasks and assignments done. So ultimately this is where you start to become more independent with your studies and become to learn how to manage your time properly. I'd say the reason for the lower contact hours is because the course content does get more trickier in your third year. So you want to spend more time trying to understand what the lecturer has been talking about in lectures and also staying on top of doing the tutorial sheets and questions to get that really good fundamental understanding of what you're learning. So, fourth year. The workload in fourth year is really, really different to the other years, mainly because the bulk of the work that you do is focused around your dissertation slash final year project. And the contact hours you have through lectures, tutorials and labs is very, very small. So in terms of my fourth year, so this year I'm in right now, um, I've only had about three to six hours per week um, that are either lectures or tutorials, which is incredibly, incredibly low compared to my first three years. So you have a lot more free time where you have the opportunity to structure it however you want. And I personally really like that aspect because I'm able to fit in tasks when I want to do them. Um, and I know that when I'm most productive, when I'm least productive, so I can arrange my timetable, my personal timetable to suit when I'm most optimal to do these tasks. And if you're in your fourth year, then the best thing to do is really create a rigid structure for yourself to follow. Um, it can change from day to day, which is what mine does, because I like to time block things, which is where you basically set yourself, say, maybe two hours or one hour to do a certain task, and you do as much as you can within that time span. So you're not expected to complete whatever you're working on, but the thing is, is that you've actually started and made progress in it. So that's my advice for how you can plan your time in your fourth year and what the workload is like in your fourth year. To give more specific advice on how you should actually tackle your dissertation, just because, you know, if you're in your fourth year, it is going to be the most prominent thing to work on. I'd say try and work on at least like two hours a day on your dissertation, because the key thing is to have that consistency each day to do some work towards your dissertation, because, you know, the small things that you do each day are not going to be significant when you do them, but over time, like, it will just add up and each bit you've done each day will build on the other so by the time you actually finish your dissertation you wouldn't have realized the actual amount of work you've put in to get that dissertation completed so that's my advice on how to really manage your progress through your dissertation so there we have it now you know the workload and how best to manage your time while studying engineering at university if you do have any questions about studying aerospace engineering or anything related to university or engineering, comment down below. I'm happy to help you guys out and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, I'll see you in another video. See you around guys.